Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be going over five of the best 2022 meta decks going forward. These are all rotation proof. These are going to be great decks to take forward when the next set comes out in this strat and um, set you up ready to play. Now these are obviously, you've got 2022 queues, so you can go and play these straight away. The first deck we're looking at today is the Black White Midrange deck. Um, has a couple of really good planeswalkers in Kaya the Inexorable and Liliana, Professor Onyx. It has um, a bit of a sack effect. It's a learn and lesson deck as well. So you've got a seven card cyborg for this deck because you will be using eye twitch and you've got Professor of Symbology as well, which means you can learn and then go and get something from the cyborgs. Um, the deck revolves around, you know, you've got stuff like uh, Kai that can put ghost counters and stuff. You can sack it and get it back at your hand and gain, you know, a little 1-1 one -one flyer out of that as well. You've got sack effect like Deadly Dispute in there. Additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw two cards and create a treasure token. Now, if you've got Kyron on the board and then you're putting your uh, ghost form counters on these, sacking them with Deadly Dispute just to draw cards, getting them back to your hand and then getting the value of a flyer in there as well just seems really, really strong. And when, you know, these creatures die, they have effects. Professor of Symbology and Eye Twitch will help you uh, learn and then go and get a lesson. Shambling Gasp, when that is sacked, target creature opponent control gets minus 1-1 one, one, or you create a treasure as well. Treasures can be sacked with Deadly Dispute because it's not just creatures, it's artifacts as well. Uh, Skullport Merchant comes in, create a treasure token. Elite Spellbinder, slowing down opponents. This card is really good for the deck as well um, because even when it leaves the battlefield, the cost is still there of that exile spell. So if you've got a ghost counter on this deck as well, on this card, sorry, you can then sack it and do it again and then potentially take another card out. Um, I really like the way this deck plays. It, it, it's quite awkward to play against. I've played against it myself and it is a very, very strong deck. You've got mass removal in Blood on the Snow in there, destroy creatures are all planeswalkers but then you can return a creature or planeswalker from the graveyard because we're running snow lands obviously and then bring it back to the battlefield so though you, you know, might lose your Kai or Professor Onyx there is ways to get them back as well and if you need to get a creature back maybe one of your lesson creatures so you can go and get a lesson you can learn and then attack the cyborg here you've got ways to get lands you've got pest summoning to make lots of blockers and sackable creatures you've also got an exile non-land permanent effect in there mascot exhibition can be a win con because you're putting down like a 2-1, a 3-2 and a 4-4 onto the battlefield so it does help you there to get a mass creatures and if you need to get another planeswalker back you can get confront the past and then get onyx or kaya back the deck you know even if opponents are dealing with you know stuff on the battlefield or planeswalkers there's ways to get them back and make them have to do it all again we've got a bit more removal vanishing verse Sometimes I find this a little bit awkward, but it, it's not bad. For two mana, exile target monocolor permanent, which means it can attack certain planeswalkers like Professor Onyx and stuff like that in case we're playing against that ourselves. Um, all in all, I think the deck's good. Faceless Haven in there is a great, great creature land. Attacking in there you can really get the job done as well. You've got Pathways, four Snowfall Sinkers. So you, you've definitely got your, you know, you're not going to fail when you do your Blood and the Snow potentially to bring something back because you're always going to have those snow lands on there. Um, but for me, this is a great deck to play. And if you love Orzov, this is a deck to take forward. Next deck we're looking at, we're taken to the skies. It's Is It Dragons. Uh, some really cool additions to this deck. We have um, Inferno of the Star Mounts. I like that. 6-6, six, six, can't be countered. Flying haste can just come down and just start attacking in. It's absolutely amazing. And of course, the... Really hard to deal with Imrith Desert Doom until late game. This is really hard to deal with because it has Ward 4. So you've got a couple of really good finishers in Is It Dragons going forward. You've still got Goldspan Dragon that is probably, for me, the best one in there. 4 4 5 Flying Haste makes those treasure tokens, which is what we like because then we can hold up anything with the removal. We've got Dragon's Fire. We can have a counter spell there. Saw it coming. Uh, Prismari Command. Replace, take the treasure, replace a treasure, and do more. This deck can really do a lot of stuff. One of the best cards in the deck is one of the most expensive uncommons in standard in paper is Expressive Iteration. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, put one of them in the bottom of your library, and Exile. So you may play the Exile card, just remember not to play your land first, because I've done that occasionally wrong, where then I've had the land and not been able to play it, so you end up getting rid of it. But if you haven't played your land first, or you know if you don't need to, you could then play that land off the Iteration, which is which is really good. So just a, a little tip there. Um, removal, like I 
Next up, we've got uh, Dragon's Fire is good. It does more damage sometimes when we've got a big dragon in hand. I like this card, you know, for this specific type of deck. And we've got Frostbite because, yet again, we're running snow-covered islands and snow-covered mountains. Um, a lot against these decks, you know, text against these decks is Raydan because putting these all into taps can sometimes be a nightmare. So Raydan is definitely a card that you want to be countering if you can or killing it as quickly as possible. Um, Galazeth Prismari makes a treasure token when it comes in. It's all, you know, treasure with dragons just for me goes really well. If you think of like Lord of the Rings with Smog and all the gold and all the shine, that for me is what, you know, what you want to mix in with dragons. And I, I do like the, the synergy of that myself. A uh, bit of card draw there. Behold the multiverse as well. I didn't call it universe this time, um, which is a cool card. Foretell it if we need to. Um, Alrun's Epiphany. Not obviously dragon related, but just a really good card for this because we potentially could play it early with dragon uh, with dragons making treasures and cards making treasures. Um, taking extra turns when you've got those massive flyers is strong, and potentially sometimes all you need is a couple of attacks to get the job done. If you can roll these over, which obviously I've done before, and I'm sure you have as well, it, it turns out to be pretty strong. Another deck that runs Faceless Haven, you'll see this a lot because it's just such a good, you know. Creature beatdown is good. Hard to deal with. Always going to have to keep that instant mana stuff up to kill it. Um, basics. And then it runs the Volatile Fjord as well, just as a four of. And the Pathway for the lands as well. Um, all in all, very nice deck. Aggressive has the evasive. So if you like flying, you like is it. This is a cool deck for you to take forward into 2022. Next deck is Mono Green. Mono Green. Like it. Stompy. Aggro. Uh, has a lot of aggressive creatures uses one of my favorite cards ranger class like it makes a 2-2 wolf builds creatures up whenever they attack and the four is when you uh four level three you may look at the top card of your library anytime cast creature spells from the top now we've got 24 creatures in this deck so there's a good chance that you are going to do that um land again at the bottom end we've got swarm shambler counters little bit of a theme here because um, we do run inscription of abundance that can put counters on stuff target player gains x life or x is great if power and occasionally we can have a lot of power uh, has a fight effect as well for two mana instant speed probably quite an underused card that one i think myself bit of ramp we got tangle florahedron and then you go to some real good value creatures here you know for two mana because it's green you've got to use double green so hard to play in other decks but a three three for two is very good uh, if you attack with a creature with Topal 6, well, you had to draw a card. Drawing card in green. Who'd have thought that, eh? Uh, and you picked four and turned this into a 5-3 gaining trample human. Um, and it isn't a human, sorry. I think it was a human. Um, but yeah, you get value with, with green. Double green. Now, Mammoth can be big. You just play lands. We're not, obviously, ramping in lands or anything like that. Old Grove Tro, triple green for a 4-4. See what I mean? You get value in green. You get big creatures, which is why green is so strong because... For less mana, you're getting bigger creatures. Four mana, you're getting a 5-4 Trampler that can learn as well, so you can get to that sideboard if we need to. Um, Essica's Chariot will make two two twos for four mana, and then you start crewing and creating copies. Green is a very, very strong deck because what you're getting is bigger creatures for the mana you're putting down. And when you can do that in any sort of deck, you're going to be, you know, it's going to be harder for sometimes for their weenier decks if they, unless they can't win super quick. You know, once the green can stabilize, which is what's good about green. Um, Froggy Muth, Frog Horror, a 4 4 trample with haste for five mana. But when it deals combat damage to a player, exile that many target cards from the graveyard. Put a 1 1 counter on it for each creature card. Exile this way, and you gain one life for each non creature. Epic card. Not even legendary either. It's absolutely epic. Um, of course, you're going to be having Face of Saving because every deck going forward will run Face of Saving. Great card to craft because you'll be able to use it in multiple decks. Running the snows because we do run Blizzard Brawl. One mana sorcery removal potentially, but you can give saying indestructible and it gets a little pump as well. So I do like that. A little bit of protection, putting a counter on with Snakeskin Vow. Just a couple of these in the deck as well. So you've got a little bit of counter theme there. You've got a little bit of counter with inscription as well. Um... Just pumping these even bigger creatures up seems good to me, especially when you've got Trample in Old Growth, Froggy. It just seems, you know, pretty strong. Even Nar Professor has it as well. Um, other than that, we're going to go... Uh, oh, we'll mention, obviously, Faces Haven. We can run the Green Lair. So Lair of the Hydra, turn it into a big, 
big creature if you can. So attacking from the lands in this deck as well seems pretty decent. The sideboard, pretty normal to any sideboard that runs these, but we do run a couple of different things because we're running green. We've got basic conjur uh, conjuration that we can run speak right uh containment breach great for attacking enchantments and artifacts as well and we run fractal summoning because we get the lands down we're going to put some more counter themes on there uh create a zero zero green blue fracture put plus one one counters on it seems decent x is what the x of the spell is it's a late game that can still be very good for me mono green is is very powerful i can see why it's at the top of one of the decks uh, but still for me uh, it's not the strongest but it, it's very close to it you'll see that at the end of the video so make sure you stay there for me um, so now we're going to get on to the second to last deck so it wouldn't be a top 2022 deck list going forward if we didn't have some form of mono red and of course mono red is strong in every faction it always is going forward and goblins is super quick and super super strong funny enough Runs Faceless Haven, eh? Faceless Haven in every deck. So, Monorad Goblins, you might have seen my gameplay of this. It's a very, very good deck. Um, slight addition, I did a budget version. Go and check that out on the list if you want a budget version of the deck. It's still super strong. And, uh, you know, it's just a great, great deck. So, lots of goblins. This deck runs 28 creatures in total because it's all about massing the board and just going down and just winning as quickly as you can. We've got hastiness with Goblin Javelin. Fireblade doesn't have haste unless it's equipped, but we're not going to be equipping that. Um, but then we've got really strong creatures like Battle Cry Goblin. Giving other creatures haste is good, and then give them a little pump is even better. Pack tactics, creating another one that could be, you know, bigger than a 1-1 one, one because we do have a lord in this. Uh, Hobgoblin Captain is a 3-1 for 2 mana. If you attack with a creature's total 6 or better, this, but this gets first strike, which is very good when it's got one toughness. It's a great aggressive creature. Relic Robber. Um, this wasn't obviously in the budget version, but putting this in is great. 2-2 two, two, haste, and it gives our opponent um, a clock, because you give them a zero, one one colourless goblin token that will do damage. Um, it can't uh, block, so they can't kill it that way. They can attack in, just don't ever block it yourself. Just keep, if you can, attacking in and giving them those little clocks that's just doing damage every time. It's so cool. The Lord is Hobgoblin Bandit Lord. will pump up all your other goblins. Um, I never really use the one tap here to do the damage because it's okay, but you tend to be dropping your hand with goblins, so you're not really doing that. Occasionally, you can get away with it. Maybe if you've got these in hand, you can save them. If, you, you know, if, you're, if you're stuck and you know you're not going to get through with these and you've got this on the field still, maybe keep that on there and do a little bit of damage that way if you can. 3-3 three, three with haste, just nothing, you know, nothing special about Hulking Bugbear, just a really good aggressive creature. And then it runs a one of the arena cards, um, which you can put in the deck, which is Goblin Trash Master, which is another way to give your goblins a bit of an anthem effect. And you can sack a goblin to destroy a target artifact if needed. Um, this deck is very simple to play for me. Bits of removal, you've got Frostbite because obviously we're running Snowland, so you want to be getting the best removal spells. And generally some of them, like Blizzard Brawl in the green and Frostbite in the red, revolves around Snowlands. Um, that's what I'm saying. Raydane is a very good card, the, the white uh, legendary creature against snow decks. Shock in there is a couple of as well because you want the mix of two. Sometimes, you know, shock going to the dome is a, is, is a lot better. So you can put those configurations how you want. Uh, Thundering Rebuke, Sorcery Speed. But for two mana, four damage to target, creature or planeswalker is, is pretty good. So in there just as a couple of. The last spell we run is you see a pair of goblins, which is a good like attack phase thing where you're just you know attacking in and then you might get the plus two plus nor to get that final bit of damage in because if you run out of steam, this is the kind of thing that will, will put in the final bit of damage for you. And if you need more creatures to go wide, you can create two one one goblins that with the goblin lord down will be bigger and if the goblin trash masters down they're even bigger and you're making two potentially three threes or more remember these aren't legendary this uh hobgoblin bandit laws you can get multiples of these in the field and just make them bigger and bigger and even trash master isn't as well uh faces haven spoke about snow covered lands the last uh lands we run are den of the bugbear because well it makes a goblin so hey let's have den of the bugbear in there mono red very good very aggressive. If you like my red, I think Goblins is definitely the way forward for your red decks. So the last deck for me is, for me, is one of the, is probably the strongest. Uh, you know how much I've loved it. I put this in a recent video, gameplay video. Go and check this out. I ranked through with this. 
Uh, mono white aggro, very good deck, very aggressive, very strong. Um, can be faster than red as well, which is great. Can get, um, it has ways to deal with green as well, which is good. But, you know, they're both all, they're all, these decks are very evenly matched and will, sometimes you'll win with one, sometimes you'll win with another. You know, there's no bad deck in these top five. So, Lots of aggressive creatures here. We've got early plays, Monk of the Open Hand, Usher the Fall, and a 2-1 for 1. What you're building with this deck is getting your Clarion down for your second spirits, and you're going wide. You're making 1-1 one, one spirit tokens. Um, a 3-1 for a 2 here. That can get you another land in case you're behind on lands, because we do run... Uh, it runs 24 lands, but you can go less if you desire. Um, sometimes I flip between 23, but, you know, we've got... Four mana spells there. We've got Grand Master. We've got a lot of three mana spells. You don't really want to be not having your lands, but I have seen decks that run maybe one less 23. You've got Faceless Haven. You want to be attacking with that as well. Faceless Haven, eh? In a deck. How strange that is. Um, what else? We've got Luminar Aspirant. A beginning of combat. Put a 1-1 one -one counter type creature. One of the most important cards in the deck. Normally kill because this is what builds up your other creatures. You know, if you go in turn one, Usher the Fall, and turn two, Lumina, then you're attacking with a 3 2 straight away. And that's where the aggression comes in. It really does, you know, start to put the pressure on. Now, turn three, you could then play Ball of the Skyclaves, then that 3 2 is then a 4 3 with the Luminarch, and then comes in and has a 2 2 on top of it. You're attacking for six in the air. What I say, it can really get out of hand. If, you know, if opponent doesn't have that removal in hand straight away, it can be GG's that quickly. They play a creature. You've got Skyclave coming in, you know, with turn two, turn three, taking it away. It's it's a very, very good deck. You've got Portable Hole that can exile as well. So you're just taking stuff away from, from hands, potentially, with Elite Spellbinder, and then just being so aggressive and attacking in. This is what I love about this deck. It just plays so well. Go to the biggest spells, Grandmaster of Flowers. Um, can become a 7-7 dragon, but I like the plus one search and library or graveyard for the monk. So it's recurring. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, which works well with Clarion, this will get a counter. If it dies, it goes into graveyard as long as it's not You go and get it back and you can start building it up again. It's a very cool card. We do have, like I said, you've got Elite Spellblinder, which is, you know, tech against opponent. You've got Skyclave to removal as well. And we've also got Paladin Class in there as a two of, which means that removal, when they might have it for our 6-3 flyer, you know, turn three, it's going to cost them one more in our turn. So it's it's a very good card. And this card for level two will pump everything up as well. So those little weenies will all get bigger and just keep attacking in. Level three is just cool as well. Target attacking creature gets plus one one for each attacking creature and gains double strike. Imagine that if it's just put on the flyer. GG's. It's as simple as that. A single icing death frost tyrant flying visions 4-3. Um, when it dies, you create a equipment token. Gives same plus two plus naught. I think it's, you know, you get to tap something down as well. So if they've got a fly, you just tap it down. And Maul is just such a good card. I love Maul when it comes in. I love that you can just attach it to a creature control. Many times it will happen. They just kill the creature in response. Then you've got to equip it for four. But still, uh, you know, it's a great, great card and just suits the aggressiveness of this deck. Um, like I said, Faceless Haven is in there. 21 snow-covered lands. You might think that's a lot, but it seems to work very well. I, I generally sometimes run 20 and then, uh, you know, 23 lands in total. Um, but this is the average that I've seen that people will play 24. But for me, Mono White Aggro is just, you know, it's a pleasure to play. And I'm sure you've come against it a lot of times. But like all these decks, if you can, give them a go. If you have to build one, just choose, you know, which they're all very good decks. So choose what your favorite color or which rare and wild cards you have most of. And maybe just sink into that a little bit more. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of rares. And, you know, building these top meta decks, it's not like the budget series. They're, these are full of rares. But for Mono White here, as you can see, um, you can... There's a... I was going to say this. I was looking at this. But there is quite a lot of rares as well, to be honest. I was thinking, maybe this or, you know, maybe we could do a budget version of this and see how it goes. But some of the cards are very important to the deck, like the Maul, um, Spellbinder, Skyclad. You need these cards to sort of disrupt your opponents. But for me, hopefully you've got a few of these cards and you can put some of these decks together. Let me know what you think of them, which ones you've played, which ones you've had good luck going forward. You know, which ones have got you to which level if you've been playing some or some version of these. I'd love to know know it um just give me a final big shout out to all my patreons um if that's something you're interested in 
I'm trying to get as much content as I can, and I appreciate all that support. And um, yeah, I'll be moving soon, so I'll be doing, you know, potentially doing a lot more videos um, until potentially I could find a job. But if this takes off more, maybe it'll just be, you know, five to six videos a week and lots of streams living that dream uh, but i would need a lot of help of, of of support of liking comment videos and obviously my patreon would be a big thing as well but hey that's for another day you lot take care enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you on the next video